language paper two exam is actually not that complicated to prepare for and to revise for. And in fact, when it comes to preparing for this paper, so this is language paper two exam, you can boil it down to just five steps, okay? So there's literally five steps and five key action plans you can take when it comes to preparing for English language paper two, okay? So just to make your life easier, because I know when it comes to English, there's always masses and masses of information that you have, lots of things that you have to remember, lots of ideas swirling around in your head. I want to argue that when it comes to English language paper two, as you can see in this table that I've created, it's actually quite simple to prepare for this exam, as long as you understand those five different steps, okay? So as you can see I've prepared a table behind me which outlines all the five different aspects of language paper two that you need to be aware of and of course if you actually want to download this table for yourself you can download it in the link okay so I've added a link which you can use to download this for free now let's begin by talking about the first step when it comes to the English language paper two exam the first thing you need to be aware of is timings and structure it's literally as simple as just being clear on how much time you need to spend on each question and making sure that you are absolutely strict of yourself when answering the different questions. Now remember, for this paper, you've got one hour, 45 minutes, okay? How do you allocate that time to all five questions? I would state and I would advise, make sure you spend the first 10 minutes of the exam reading through, firstly, the five questions, get a lay of the land, highlight the keywords in the question, and then within the same minutes, reading the two extracts, okay? You need to work on your speed reading. If you're looking at this and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do five minutes, work on your speed reading, okay? So make sure you practice as many papers. Um, in terms of speed reading and speed writing, it comes with practice, okay? However, let's go back to the timings. Spend the first 10 minutes reading through, firstly, the question paper, then the two extracts, then, Question number one, which is a multiple choice question, spend maximum of five minutes on this question. As I mentioned, it's a multiple choice. You literally shade in the correct four statements and it tends to be related to the opening paragraph of source A. This question is worth four marks, so spend no more than five minutes on this question. Question number two, which is the summary question, which is the first comparison question where you ask to look at text A, text B, or source A and source B. And then you've got to write a summary of either similarities or differences. This question is worth eight marks. Try to aim to write at least two comparative pill paragraphs. If that's a struggle, write one comparison pill paragraph. Spend a max of 10 minutes on this question as it's worth just eight marks, okay? Question number three, which is now worth 12 marks. This is the language question, okay? The great thing about this question is it's not a comparison question. You're asked to just look at one of the sources and talk about how the writer uses language to illustrate whatever the source is talking about, okay? This question, as it's worth 12 marks, spent a max of 30 minutes on this question. Then for question number four, which is where you've got the massive comparison question, okay? You've got to write about writer viewpoints. This question is worth 16 marks. However, you're going to be working really hard for these 16 marks because you're constantly comparing the two texts, okay? Spend a max of 17 minutes on this question. Try to aim to write three comparison paragraphs, okay? Comparing both texts consistently using the PIL framework and the PIL structure, okay? Finally, question number five, which is in section B, this is your writing question. Unlike question five in paper one, where you get a choice of a creative or descriptive writing, you've got to work with what you're given in question five for paper two. This is where you've got a letter, speech, or an article. And for this question, spend a max of 50 minutes on this question. 50 minutes because it's worth half of the overall paper marks. It's worth 40 marks. How you allocate that time is spend the first 10 minutes of that 50 minutes planning your response. Okay, you're given a statement, work with it, plan your response, and then the remaining 45 minutes, or rather the remaining 40 minutes even, okay, so the first 10 minutes of the 50 minutes planning, then 40 minutes writing out your response and maybe you can allocate, you know, five minutes towards the end just checking your response, okay? That's the first step when it comes to the language paper two exam. It's really as simple as this. Now, the second step is you need to be crystal clear on the difference between language and structure. This is important not only for the language question, which is question number three, but also for question four. This is where you're talking about writers' viewpoints. How are they showing the viewpoints, the perspectives? You need to illustrate an awareness of how, when you're picking out a quotation, how the writer, for instance, uses a metaphor or a simple sentence or whatever, okay? And I would suggest these are the language techniques and the structure techniques that are guaranteed to come up in any language paper to extract or insert, okay? So when it comes to language, be clear that it's to do with the building blocks of English. The main language techniques I would suggest you remember is alliteration, metaphor, simile, oxymoron, and my personal favorite, which is semantic field. That's language techniques. However, structure applies to beginning versus end. You can talk about what's happening at the start of an extract versus the end. 
Declarative sentence, again, another personal favorite for structure. This is a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. Listing, repetition and narrative voice. This counts as structure if they're writing in first person or third person, okay? That's the main thing in step number two for preparing for English language paper two exams. Now let's talk about specifically question five frameworks, okay? As I mentioned in the upcoming exams, you will either get to write a letter or a speech or an article. The challenge is that you don't know what's gonna come up so you need to be clear on the form and format of all of them, okay? If you don't show an awareness of form, you're gonna be losing vital marks. Let's talk about firstly, if you're asked to write a letter, there's literally eight steps to writing the perfect letter. You start off by including the address of the person that's receiving this letter, okay? Address of the recipient. So let's say you're writing to the MP of um, your local constituency or whatever, right? So just your local MP, it would be MP John Smith and then one Westminster Way, London, and then the postcode, okay? You put, you begin with their address, okay? Then you write the date. Don't write some crazy date, you know, like 10 December, 2050. Just keep it to the same date that you're writing, okay? So the date, then dear whoever, make sure you are writing formally, okay? It's gonna be in very rare instances, to be honest, I've not seen any past papers where you're writing to your mom or someone that's informal, so just keep it formal, okay? Dear Mr, dear MP, whatever. Then you have your opening paragraph where you outline what you're talking about, you make it clear which side of the argument you stand, okay? And then you have your main points, make sure when you are arguing, either in your letter, speech or article, you include anecdotes, statistics, and examples to reinforce your point, okay? So of course, in your main points, add your anecdotes, statistics to make it more convincing. Then make sure you balance your discussion with counter arguments while people will disagree with you, otherwise your argument is not complete. Then finish off with your closing paragraph by reiterating and sta stating, okay, even if I've considered why people will disagree with me and my counter arguments, I'll still think I'm right before you finish off with kind regards. I would suggest kind regards rather than yours sincerely because it's easier to spell than your first name, Barbara, surname, Njao, okay? That's obviously my first name and surname, but you can just put your first name or surname or whatever name you wanna make up. Make sure it's first name and surname. That's letter writing. However, of course, you need to be careful in preparing, okay, to make sure you ensure you've prepared for all different forms of writing. So of course, let's also talk about an article which could come up. The perfect article literally follows seven steps, okay? So seven steps is for your article. You start off with your headline, okay? So your article, your headline, brief, nice and short, top, center, maximum five words, okay? You keep it nice and crisp. The best and easiest way to start your article is just turn whatever you're gonna talk about into a rhetorical question. That's the easiest way, okay? Then your opening paragraph, again, you introduce what you're talking about and what side of the argument you stand on. Add your subheading, okay? Make sure that you also include brief subheadings to break up your article. If you look at any online newspaper or even if you go and actually physically get a copy, say, of the Evening Standard, the Metro, you will find that for the article, to make, it, for, for, um, to make it easier for readers to read the article, the publishers tend to include subheadings. It makes it easier for your eyes to glide over it, okay? So you need to do the same. So add your first subheading, then your main points, okay? So your main reasons, again, adding anecdotes, statistics, and examples, then your sub second and subheading before you include your counter arguments while people will disagree with you before you finish your closing paragraph and say you know even if people disagree with me this is what I think that's your framework for an article okay seven steps now finally this is the final framework when it comes to writing a speech because you may well be asked to write a speech okay when it comes to speech there's literally six steps and to be honest of the three non-fiction bits of article I think speech is probably the easiest okay so with your speech, make sure you understand which audience you're writing to. So for instance, if, or rather, which audience you're speaking to, because it's a speech you're supposed to be talking, okay? So for instance, let's say you're writing a speech for teachers, whatever, right? Adults, grown up. Begin with ladies and gentlemen. However, if the speech is to other students, let's say on your school leavers day, address them as fellow students, comma, then your opening paragraph, state which side of the argument you stand on, what you believe, then you have your main points, okay, so point number one, two, and three, including your made-up anecdotes, statistics, examples. Then you simply just go into your counter-arguments, okay? Remember, the speech doesn't have to have subheadings or any of that, okay? It's meant to be delivered. 
to be speaking to your listening audience, okay? So you literally go into your main points, counter arguments, why people will disagree with you, then your closing discussion, okay? So you've considered why people disagree with you, but then you still state, no, I still think I'm right in your closing paragraph. Then the most important step that a lot of students always forget in the speech is ending by thanking your audience. If you're standing in front of an audience, right, in actual real time, you always need to thank them for their attention, for their time, okay? Simply add a final sentence stating, thank you for listening and I hope you've learned something new. So as I mentioned, guys, if you want to, you can download this, okay? So I've included a link that you can download this table for free in case it's gonna help in your GCSE revision. But also, guys, I will also be running an Easter GCSE revision class where I'm gonna be going over the 2022 Paper 2 exam, how to write model answers. So if you're finding it a little bit tricky to kind of wrap your mind around these exams, please make sure you sign up for it. And I look forward to you joining in the class, okay? So thanks so much for your attention. I'm ending like a speech, <laughs> okay? So thank you so much for your attention. I hope you found this useful.